Welcome back to No Sleep Sleepover. This episode is brought to you by our jobs because they're the only ones paying us. We don't have uh, any sponsors still. <laughs> That's just a friendly reminder. Still, Liquid IV, you know, I'm trying to think who else do I hear on the podcast ads? Anyone? Me undies? Me undies? We could do me undies. <laughs> have you? I've never heard of me undies on a podcast before, but I'm into it. Yeah, no, they have like the matching underwear sets, like the bra. I'm talking about them like. Yeah. Anyways, I, I don't own a pair. I would own a pair, you know, if they sent us free pairs. But I hear good things about them from people who get ads. So I don't know how mm-hmm. reliable that is. But you can get mm-hmm. like matching sets and stuff. And that's really cool. I love it. Let's work on it. Yeah, seriously. Me and hit us up, please. Anyways, welcome back. <laughs> I'm Logan. That's Matt. And we are back again. And- and you've been on some trips, so what have you been up I to? I have. Um, I went camping in um, the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, also known as the Ooh. UP. Um, and that was a lot of fun. I haven't. I went camping earlier this year, but only for a weekend. So mm-hmm. this was like a whole week trip, and it was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. And I slept in a tent, and it rained, and so I got wet <laughs> and cold. So that was fun. I got a billion bug bites. Um, I think I broke my toe. <laughs> oh, wow. I was trying to. So all in all, maybe not the best. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, but those were just. Sound like a glowing recommendation. Like, well, it was nice. I have a billion bug bites and I broke my toe and it rained in the tent. So, okay. but, you know, no, it just, I, I always remember camping as, you know, kind of like roughing it in the woods and stuff. And so that was just a reminder, like, oh, yeah, that is what it is. Mm -hmm. To be fair, I did break my toe. It was my own fault. I was trying to chop wood, and then the wood came off the axe and dropped on my toe. So, But to be fair, you wouldn't have been chopping wood had you not been camping. That is true. Right? But I did have a... It's not like you go... It's not like you're going to finish this podcast and be like, roommates, roomies... I shall go I'm collect go. wood for harvest. You know, it's. You know, I actually it's... do have a fire pit in my backyard, though. So. Oh. But, but I, do you? <laughs> I just. Do you go and cut wood for it, or do you buy it at like Home Depot for like five bucks? I just buy it. Actually, I did buy it from <laughs> um, this one woman on Facebook one time. I went oh. on my community page and I said, "Hey, it's really late and the stores are closed. Does anyone sell wood right now?" And this lady said, "Yep." Message me. She messaged me and said, here's my address. Come pick it up. And I said, all right. <laughs> I did. Hmm. Not going to lie. That would be very good of a serial killer to do that method. Be yeah. like like looking out for posts and been like, yeah, come over to my house at 10 p.m. to get that random object you want. And then like, yeah. Yeah. You know, after I did it, I was like, that probably wasn't smart. But I did it and I was fine. <laughs> Anyways, camping was really fun. It was really, really pretty. If you've never been to the UP in Michigan, it, like I was right on Lake Superior, crystal clear water, which is oh, wow. such a stark difference from Lake Erie. Oh my God, Lake Erie looks like mud. I literally <laughs> was just walking through and I could just see the bottom of the water. You could just see your feet so clearly. It just looked mm-hmm. like glass. Everything was so beautiful. I had so much fun with the people that I was with and it was a really good time overall. <laughs> but mm-hmm. bugs just don't like me. And neither does wood, I guess. <laughs> but <laughs> you know, wood hates me. Metal's ambivalent. Uh, <laughs> plastic you know. and I get along. Yeah, we're best yeah, friends. It's the whole thing. Um, but then That's after funny. that, I went on a, another mini vacation. It was kind of just a long weekend, and mm. that was also to Michigan. Just because Michigan is right there, it's so close, and it has so much to it. And so I went to a city town, whatever it is, called mm-hmm. New Buffalo. <laughs> a city town. I don't named know. New Bu- I don't Why do it? It feels like one of those like historic towns where it's like it's a sit down. you can get like authentic saltwater taffy and like. Oh, I'm pretty sure you could. They have like a cafe with a bunch of hipsters. Oh well, yeah. And, like, I like 500 thrift stores. Yeah, it w- it was so it was like right on the water again, um, mm. and. It was really cute. And so we went to the beach. We just went, did a little local shopping. We went to local breweries. I went to a brewery that was in an old church. So the church had shut down. Oh. They bought it and turned it into a brewery, which was really cool. And they had really good beer. Shout out to them. Um, and then I went <laughs> to Chicago for a day. And I had never been to Chicago before. 
So oh, that was fun. I was going to say this whole thing felt like it was sponsored by the Michigan Tourism Board. <laughs> like I was about to hear like pure Michigan. Seriously. At the end of that. Is that Tim Allen that does those Michigan commercials? Is it Tim Allen? I thought it was just some rando. No, I'm pretty it sure it's like a celebrity. I'm pretty sure it's Tim Allen. Wow. Because we'll the check clears, Tim you Allen? know. Yes, Tim Allen. Because I think I'll do, he's from I'll Michigan. I'll do tourism. I'll do tourism for like North Dakota or I don't know. What's another state that like no one cares about? Wyoming. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> do people care about Wyoming? <laughs> Go visit Yellowstone, and that's it. Wyoming. <laughs> Ta da. And then <laughs> you can do it in like one day, Wyoming. Seriously, there's probably not much to oh see up gosh. there. I don't really know. I've yeah, never been. I don't know. But that's what I. We're just haters. Wyoming haters on this show, apparently. We just hate a lot of but. things, and I think that's kind of part of our identity. <laughs> Which is so funny because we're very positive, oh like my gosh, loving people, yeah. and yet here in this podcast, we get together and we're like, you know what? I don't like. I don't like how she wears those pants and blah blah blah. And it's like, what? It's just who are we? Put a microphone in, so- in front of someone, and they will just ramble about the stupidest things and every little thing that's on their mind and it just gives you so much mm-hmm. confidence and it's hard to explain until you're here. I mean, when we yeah. first started po- podcasting, um, which has been about a year now, not, oh, not wow, this really? specific podcast, but yeah. Um, I'm going to look now because I think actually you might be right. This We might have like a year celebration. I think I, I, It's not for this specific one. Um, it was for mm-hmm. our other one. R.I.P. <laughs> <laughs> but well, that one was a mini series. To be yeah. fair, that one was designed, and that one might come back uh, eventually in a different form. But uh, oh We're well, about, just so you um, know, our first episode, October 29th of last year. So of this one, we are gearing up. Yeah, we are gearing up for a one year. We're almost there, and we only have like fifteen episodes, maybe. Uh, no, I think we're at over 20. Are we? We're at, uh, yeah, we're, this is going to be our 23rd episode. Isn't that great? <gasps> wow, look at us go. Which, I 23rd mean, we're doing, pretty, we're doing pretty well, you know? Good for us. I mean, we're doing well in the sense that, like, we enjoy doing it, and that's all that matters. Yeah. You know, we could have 10 listeners, 100 listeners, a million listeners. Um, but we're having fun. It's definitely not the last one. <laughs> 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 uh, I but, wish. I don't know. I there was a quote. I I don't know who it was, but they had a. It was a great line. I think it was like someone who wanted to be an astronaut wasn't able to become an astronaut, but they heard a quote about this idea of like you have to enjoy the experience and the hard work, even if it doesn't bring like the success or the end result you wanted to. And I think that's really true. You know, I yeah. I think if we were to be doing this to try and be something, to try and ooh like be you know hot shots, and like that was our main goal. I think that the quality and, you know, our enjoyment of it would not be as strong. Yeah. So, yeah, you kind of have to and I, take it step by step. I do enjoy doing this. It's fun. Like I said, oh, yeah, me too. put a microphone in, in front of someone and they just ramble. And mm-hmm. who, I didn't think that I'd be that kind of person. Like, yeah, I just want to talk about everything and word vomit <laughs> into a microphone for everybody to hear. <laughs> but here I am being a here super dumb every week. But I enjoy it. <laughs> Every week's a little bit of a stretch. Every two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> every once in a while, I have a good idea. But every week ish, you know. Mm. Every every two weeks on, one two weeks off. Yeah, and then <laughs> it just go. like hits, and it's just like yeah. stupid. And I feel like it's gonna be a stupid week. So that's why you're gonna take over, and you have something really fun to share with us. Well, should I tell you real quick about my Toronto trip? Oh my gosh, yeah, I'm so sorry. So, no, you're totally fine. I was just, uh, it's funny how we all vacationed recently on the Great Lakes. But yeah, I was at Toronto. I love Toronto. I will say it's very pricey and the traffic is terrible. Yeah. But I think we're kind of spoiled as Clevelanders. Like, you know, if there's traffic in Cleveland, it like maybe is like a 10 minute like thing. Yeah. But like in Toronto, there was like traffic. I was like sitting in like tons of traffic, like mm-hmm. the whole trip. It was like insane. Um, but it was great. No, it was, uh, we went to Kensington Market, which was really cool. Kind of is like almost, think of like West Side Market, mm-hmm. but instead of having it in that giant kind of market building, if it was like homes oh, or like cute. businesses in the front, it was really I like cool. That. That's fun. And then the big, the big point was, uh, to see Gaga. So it was really fun. Mm, that's right. So excellent concert. So good. I think the best pop performer in the game, personally, for me. Uh, totally worth it. Haven't so you been really waiting glad. for two years? 
Yeah, I bought the tickets in February of 2020. Mm. And the show is supposed to be August of 2020. So this, the fact that the show got postponed to August of 2022 and like, yeah, I mean, it's kind of wild. And mm-hmm. so I think that's like the longest time I've like held onto a ticket. Yeah, that's you honestly know? insane. I would honestly just give up at that point. I'd be like, you know what? <laughs> I I probably will be doing something. I'm just going to sell this mm-hmm. and figure it yeah. out. It's just that's yeah. insane that so many people are going to concerts and events and stuff that were supposed to be in 2020. Yeah, and it's it's actually interesting. Like this year, like I went to my first concert since 2020 in February or March. So like just to kind of like get back into it and like be doing things, it's yeah. like, it still feels kind of fresh and weirdly weird. If that makes sense, but yeah, I feel like if I'm in a crowd too big, I'm like eh, I don't think I should be here. <laughs> it <just> feels <laughs> like yeah. a super spreader. Like, yeah, well, there was like 50,000 people at the Rogers Ooh. Center, so it was crazy, but. Yeah, I didn't catch anything, uh, except, you know, a good concert. You know, yeah. That, that was good. <laughs> oh, so fun. Um, all right. Well, are you ready for a little true crime? Yes, we're doing true crime part I, two. I think you're going to love this one. I'm so excited. Logan, have you ever heard of Balloon Fest 86? I have. <laughs> <gasps> are you ready to talk about it? Okay, yeah. I'm interested. I like how, are you nervous? <laughs> I mean, I was nervous of the true crime, but... Less so, I think, of the Balloon Fest. I don't really... Well, it is technically true crime, and I'll tell you why. Okay. We'll get there. Okay. We're going to get there. Okay, I'm ready. Um, well, I picked this because I've always been fascinated by the story. Yeah. And I know in the past, you know, we've talked about, like, how you're, like, not super big on, like, the stabby, stabby, punch, punch, killy, killy. Yeah. Um, so this one I felt like was really interesting because... I do think that there was some kind of crimes involved, you know, maybe not intentional, maybe not necessarily like what they were trying to do, right? But as a result of the consequences. Um, So let's get into it. So picture it, 1986 Cleveland, the Cleveland United Way, they're like, we need to break a world record. (laughs) So for those who are like me and you're like, okay, I think I know what the United Way is. It is to quote Wikipedia. An international network of over 100,800 local nonprofit fundraising affiliates. So it's the largest nonprofit organization in the U.S. by donations from the public prior to 2016. And they give a lot of their money out to like American Cancer Society, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, Catholic Charities, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, Salvation Army, and more. So kind of what, what they are, they're kind of like, it, it almost reminds me of like Seinfeld when they talk about like, you know, we're a, we're a non, is, is it the human league or whatever his, like the human co- corporation where it's like, we're a, we're a corporation that like, you know, does things for corporations. It's kind of like they're, Essentially, they're, they're, yeah. they're not really, they like, take in the money and then the more money they yeah. have, the more money they can give to other nonprofits. Yeah, they're kind of like this weird middleman. Or like, remember the office when they were there was like the kids bring your kids to work day, and the one kid was like, "Why doesn't the paper just sell directly to the consumer? Like, why do they need to go to yeah. you to sell the paper or whatever?" Exactly. And I just thought like it's kind of like that. Mm-hmm. So, so they were like, "Okay, we want to break a world record. Uh, we want to. They wanted the publicity." And they wanted to raise money. You know, classic, right? So the idea was like, well, we should do something fun. Like, it should be, you know, because, like, you know, the idea with most, you know, like a radiothon or, like, an event to raise money, it's always, like, sad, right? It's like, oh, like, Sarah McLaughlin music, the dog needs food, the kid needs food, you know, the cl- – remember those – okay, I still, like, can picture, you know, those, like – it's, like, the kids with, like, the cleft Oh, you know, yeah, the cleft or palette. Whatever. Yeah, like those, you know, like they always kind of target like your emotions and like, yeah, this is sad. Like, die by or the but they were, like, uh, in the movie theaters, they did the St. Jude like previews with like Jennifer Aniston and like all the celebrities <laughs> with just like the sick kids on their laps and they're like, you can help uh, Sarah right here. Like, <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, I can't. Effective, but super sad. Yeah. Uh, so they were like, let's do something fun. And they were like, well, what if we did the world record for simultaneous release of balloons? Which, to me, is, like, ridiculous off the bat. If I was on this committee, I'd be like, no, it's stupid. Mm-hmm. And environmentally dangerous, which we'll get to. But at the time, so, you know, that was what people did often. I mean, up until well, this recently. Was, this was definitely, people were starting to kind of consider that, like, it wasn't a good thing. Yeah. I think this was, you, and we'll kind of get there. This okay. was definitely, 
I feel like, and you know, for someone who wasn't around in the 80s and was around in the 90s, but as a child, like, I feel like the 80s and 90s was like this kind of moment of like, oh, like some of these Save things the that like we've been doing. Yeah, it's like this was kind of the beginning, like the slow kind of, you know, I think before then in the 60s, 70s, it was like, oh, those hippies, those, you know, those losers, yeah. like, I'm just going to eat my steak and release balloons, you know, whatever <laughs> it was. So. <laughs> So they were inspired, actually, by Disneyland, who last year in 1985 set a record called Skyfest that released a million balloons into the air. So they were like, we could beat a million. Let's go for two million. And they actually worked with an L.A.-based company, and this guy was called Treb Heining, and he has a little company called Balloon Art. He spent six months preparing for this. Jeez. Six months. Dude, that's like one... What? Like, if we live for 80 years, that's like one one ninetieth of your life dedicated to, like, this event. And I mean, that is a kind of a weird big deal. I wonder how much, you know, he got paid to focus on all that or how much those balloons were and everything. I don't know if you're going to mm-hmm. share that. But it's like to not do any other business probably for six months just because you're, like, trying to pump mm-hmm. all this out, make sure you have enough. That's mm-hmm. that's a lot. For Cleveland? Yeah. And it, it, we'll, get, we'll definitely get into it. Actually... In a second, I'll kind of okay. explain more about that. Um, so what they decided to do, they created a net type structure the size of a city block. And the idea was that the balloons would kind of go up into this net and then they would be held there. Mm. And so this net measured 250 feet by 150 feet. It was three stories high. Jeez. And yeah, it was covered with that woven mesh net. Okay. Okay. So they back. This is back when Higby's was still around, by the way. Ooh. So for those who don't know, Cleveland, uh, downtown Public Square. It's like a square that is That's public. public. <laughs> 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 it's not a park. It's like it's like a plaza, and like yeah. they've they've actually recently updated it, so you can go and they have like a little sprinkler thing for like this the winter or the summer. The winter they put on this gorgeous light display. Yeah. The RTA cuts through, and then nearby is Tower City that has the mall, the Jack Casino, you know, a lot of the culture, you know, city governance, the office buildings. So it's kind of like a. It's. I would say it's the heart of the yeah, city. Yeah, I was gonna uh, say maybe. it's like here's like, come here and then you know you can find your way out of the city kind of. Yeah. But like if you're here, you can go any direction basically and mm. you know figure it out. So I think that's a good way yeah. to describe it. And well, and it's interesting too because like remember when America Ninja Warrior filmed here? Yeah, that's where they did their their show was on Public Square. Like that's how like. So I think yeah. it's like a good kind of central representation of Cleveland. Mm-hmm. Um, so where were we? Uh, um, Higby's. Okay, so Higby's. So the casino used to be Higby's, which was kind of like a Coles, but regional. And they, I think, actually sold to Coles, or they got they sold the company off. So next to that building, that's not a casino. They actually had scaffolding that was two stories tall. And so then they had larger balloons that were going to be outside of the mesh. And so the idea was, okay, if we release the larger balloons with the mesh, the larger balloons will kind of take off with the mesh to release the small balloons underneath it. That was the idea. Logic. All right. I don't love that idea (laughs) because, like, to me, it's like, well, what happens if these large balloons carry this giant net? Just, like, across the city. (laughs) Yeah. Like, yeah, like, I think if anything, what they should have done was have, like, maybe, like, the do the giant net, but then, like, okay, at the same time, we'll do a 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. We cut the net, or I don't know. I, Something. I just feel like I don't love this idea. No. So, uh, so then this was, this was Treb. So he explains that he was the project manager. He worked for it for six months, lived in Cleveland for a month to prepare for it. We wanted to design the structure that filled a city square. And could stand up to about 90 mile per hour winds, which was building code. The one piece net was fabricated by the exact company that he founded that built the cargo nets actually for the space shuttle. This was like pretty legit. Impressive. So you asked earlier about the cash. Yes. $500,000 to put this on. So I'm assuming the bulk of that went to paying for the company who kind of did the logistics. Yeah. Paying for the balloons, which, you know, if we're talking about 2 million balloons, that's gotta be what one fifth of that budget i mean that's and then you gotta pay 
the man permits for his time constructions. Too. Well, yeah, oh, I, that's that was the lead thing for sure, right? He's being paid for that seriously. Uh, but the rest of them were actually volunteers. So the day of inside underneath that net within that scaffold structure, they had two thousand five hundred students and volunteers who just sat there filling balloons with helium oh my God. and then tying the knots. Logan, I would not do this. I no way could I do this. That's I'm sorry. <laughs> insane. I mean, I guess if you're passionate about the United Way and you're like, you know what? I really like what they're trying to do here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. but Or if you need like something on your resume or something i don't know but that's insane. i'm a balloon tire <laughs> but you could say i volunteered for hours for yeah. like a, a major charities world record mm. attempt to you know but so like it sounds impressive mm. in theory sounds miserable to actually do though <laughs> so what they would do they would you know have the valves of helium blow up the balloon tie the balloon and just toss it up into the net just let it go and it goes up into the net structure, Bye. right? So Cleveland.com has this quote, fingers numbed and bled. Ah. Wraps of medical tape kept the volunteers going. Oh. So then uh, this was one of the volunteers. She was 16 years old. Her name was Mandy. She went to Trinity High School and she said, it was an assembly line nonstop. I was a tire. I was not a very good tire before the event. But after a while, I could do it with my eyes closed. It didn't take long to get good at it and fast. About 20 seconds, a balloon. So she got to a point where every 20 seconds, she was blowing up a balloon, tying it, releasing it, grabbing the next balloon. I have um, been at parties where there's been a lot of balloon tying. That Mm -hmm. stuff does, it really starts to, because you have to like wrap it around your finger and so it starts to, like, cut off circulation. And I'm sure, like, you start getting cuts and stuff. And so yeah. I can't imagine trying to do two million of those. Like, mm-hmm. just, yeah, that that would hurt an a lot. insane amount. would be amount. a lot of work. Yeah. So, um, and just another, so you're probably wondering, how are they making money? So, actually, they sold sponsorships. So $1 for every two balloons, basically. So that was kind of, yeah. like, the sponsorship, which I... I guess I don't really understand, like, so it wasn't like they put your name on two balloons. It just yeah. was like, oh, here's a dollar, and that supports two balloons. I, it's kind of like when people, but. like, buy stars, I think. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, my star is up there somewhere, but it's kind of just, like, the thought that counts, mm-hmm. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. yeah. So the night before, the Friday night before, there was actually a seam in the building which caused them to have – they had to rebuild parts of the netting. So um, that Friday night, there was actually a giant storm, which, you know, typical Cleveland weather. Yeah. Um, So then Saturday morning, they're all, you know, bright and early, tying the balloons. Um, Another rainstorm was coming. So they were like, we have to go now or we can't go at all. So (laughs) they weren't – they were trying to get to 2 million, remember? They stopped at around 1.4 million Mm -hmm. at 1.50 p.m. And so at this point – Everyone has gathered, you know, the, all the tires are, have tied. You know, there's people in downtown, you know, the media's down there, right? There's marching bands playing, and uh, the trumpets are playing, no, and everyone's no, excited. No, 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 no. The mayor's Not there in his top the hat. That's the environment <laughs> for charity. Woo! <laughs> it's like the Mr. Monopoly guy's there, Mr. Peanut <laughs> is there. It's, just a, it's a whole event for Cleveland. Everyone's so excited. It's a hullabaloo. <laughs> Oh, well, boy. and here's what's crazy. Multiple people from the United Way and like they were like, this is going to put Cleveland on the map, which to me is ridiculous. This is like this is a one time event, like a one time event doesn't put a city on a map. Um, like what puts a city on the map is like a rock hall museum, yeah. you know, institutions, places that people can actually visit when they go to the city. Right. I was going to say, actually, Cleveland was already on the map because our river had caught fire by that time. And so people remembered Look us. us. <laughs> Look at us with our environmentally dangerous activities. Um, so if you see the pictures, you kind of it's a little weird because you could see how the netting didn't work out completely because yeah, like, you'll see like bulges mm-hmm. where the netting still kind of is like in place. However, eventually all those balloons go up and there's pictures of how the city looks. And, and real uh, quick, this, if oh yeah, you go for it. see those pictures, it does look kind of cool. 
It does, 100%. If nothing bad happened and it wasn't bad for the environment, you see that and you're like, oh, that's kind of cool. It's like really pretty and colorful, but, you mm-hmm. know, we know that it didn't happen that way. Yeah. So I was I was watching some of the footage and someone, this newscaster goes, there's no mistake on the lake anymore. <laughs> and I was like, oh, come on. Like, Boo. you just can't, like... Like, the idea that this event was going to, like, oh, my God, you guys, I thought Cleveland sucked, but they just released all these balloons. And now I love And they're them. the best city ever. Yeah, it's just going to expunge everything bad that ever happened in Cleveland. Mm-hmm. Now it's just a golden city. Yeah. And actually, the city of Cleveland, um, they actually went along with it because they also thought, hey, it's good publicity, mm-hmm. which is just so funny to me. I don't think of this as, like, great publicity. Like, okay, it's a, it's a cool one-off event for the city, but, like... Yeah, I, I don't get why they thought that people were like, oh, we're living in Nashville. We should go to Cleveland. Oh, hey, I'm here in Alaska. I'm going to travel to Cleveland. Like, I don't think this was a motivation. So I think because we know how it ended, it that adds to it. But again, like, mm. like I said, the pictures are cool. So, like, mm. imagine seeing the balloons over the city. Mm-hmm. Number one, it's a success, success. Number two, it's not bad for the environment. You see those pictures from somewhere else, and mm-hmm. you say, oh, the city looks really pretty with everything going on. Like, I kind of want to go visit, you know? And then you go mm-hmm. check it out. So I kind of get it in theory, and world records were super exciting, and I feel like a little bit easier to break back then. I feel like world records nowadays mm-hmm. just keep getting harder and harder because people just keep going at it and <laughs> getting better and better. Mm-hmm. And so it's just so hard to break any world record now. And so it was just, mm-hmm. you know, big deal. Fun stuff. So, I don't know. <laughs> fun, hashtag fun stuff. Hashtag fun stuff. Um, okay, so the idea, so they released 1.4 million balloons. Mm-hmm. So the idea with a balloon launch, or, you know, just in general, you have a helium-filled latex balloon going outside, and it's going all the way up. The idea is that the pressure inside of the balloon will become too much so it'll explode the balloon, and then the shards of latex will peacefully come down to Earth. That is the idea. So United Way thought the balloons would go high in the atmosphere. The pressure causes the balloon to expand and burst. Remnants come down. So that's what they thought. However, Mm-mm-mm. they did not know. They didn't study Cleveland weather because here's what happened. The balloon fest balloons collided with a front of cool air and rain. That caused the balloons to drop to the ground, still inflated. So instead of rising and exploding up high in the sky, these balloons were pushed down. They're still intact. These orbs and just clogged the land, clogged the waterways. So about 1 million of the 1.4 million balloons fell to earth immediately. Mm-hmm. Like just they went up and came down. Like just boop. And just think, like a balloon isn't, I mean, some of them were probably smaller but you know they're not like little guys they're decent size mm-hmm. a million of those in the water mm-hmm. on the streets like falling just everywhere <laughs> all around cleveland mm-hmm. not great so they also so the atlantic posted a video that said that the organizers thought that 10 percent of the balloons would land in lake erie that fact actually it 60 percent landed in lake erie uh, and they were unpopped. So Lake Erie was covered in about 600,000 unpopped balloons. And most of them actually landed in Canada. <laughs> so, like, that's what's kind of like Take almost like a Canada. screw you. Yeah, like <laughs> kind of like you could deal with it, Canada. So here's what's really interesting, though. So immediately environmentalists complained about the balloons being pollutants. But multiple sources – this is interesting – said that, no, the balloons were actually biodegradable. But in 1986? Yeah. Did they have biodegradable balloons back then? I have no idea, but I feel like that's just, you know, trying to save face. You know, like, ah, ha, ha, oops, one million balloons just fell to the ground. Don't worry, they're safe for the environment. Well, it kind of reminds me of when I was in um, Asheville, or no, was it Asheville? Wilmington, Wilmington. We did a ghost tour. And there was this street that was a graveyard, um, or there was a graveyard, and they wanted to put a street through it. So the city said, hey, we'll move all the bodies, and then we'll put the street in there. So the city put, you know, they took the bodies, moved them to a different graveyard that was, like, further out because they wanted the street. Mm -hmm. Well, 
years, many years later, they were doing construction to find out that the city lied. They didn't move the bodies. They just moved the headstones. See, it all just takes this one city person to say, yeah, no, trust me. Tell everyone else. (laughs) Just say, yeah, I, you know, came from this guy. It's obviously true. Uh, So because of the balloons, Burke Lakeport Airfront, they had to close for 30 minutes. There was many car accidents because people were, you know, looking at the balloons. There was balloons on the roads, right? It it was chaos. You can't see the lines if there's balloons everywhere. Mm -hmm. Doesn't work. Yeah. Uh, Balloons landed on a pasture in Medina County, and it spooked Louise Nowakowski's Arabian horses. Oh, no. That allegedly suffered permanent injuries because of being spooked by the balloons. So eventually, Louise uh, Nowakowski sued the United Way of Cleveland for $100,000 in damages. They settled for undisclosed terms. I'm betting that they probably paid out most of that, if not all of that. Mm -hmm. I mean, just to avoid the publicity. So... It's chaos. It's just chaos. But here's kind of where this, to me, is. it really kind of leans towards the true crime a little bit more. So two fishermen in their 40s, Raymond, Broderick, and Bernard Skulzer. But there's also some reports that say Skip Sullivan. So I wonder, I don't know, like, if there was one report had the names wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with Raymond and Bernard. But um, so they had gone out on September 26th, and they were reported missing by their families the day of the event. So they were missing for a little bit prior to the event. Um, And they actually found their 16-foot boat anchored west of Edgewater Park's break wall. And for those who don't know Edgewater Park, that's just like left of downtown Cleveland. Um, They found life jackets, hat, and fishing pole in the boat. The boat's motor was gone, and the sides of the boat were battered. So the idea that they felt was, okay, it's been pounding against the break wall for a while to have kind of gotten that damage on the boat. And it was found in the morning. Now, here was the problem. They were trying to search for these guys in the water. However. Wait, wait, wait. Let people guess real quick. Oh, go for it. Can you think what would happen if Coast Guard, like, had to try to find somebody in the water where there was 600,000 balloons? Go ahead. (laughs) So the Coast Guard search and rescue helicopter crew had difficulties reaching the area because of the asteroid fields of balloons. They tried to look for them, but it was hard because of, you know, all these balloons. And they talked about, well, you have orange balloons and faces, you know, like the color. So you're, you're trying to, like, you know, look. And so two days after the event, uh, they actually suspended their search. And subsequently, the fishermen's bodies were washed ashore. And the wife of one of the fishermen actually sued the United Way of Cleveland, and they also settled on undisclosed terms. She sued them for $3.2 million, and kind of similar with the horse lady, I feel like they paid most of that out. Oh, for sure. I feel like they they did not want the publicity in the press of, you know, going to court against a widow whose husband may, I mean, may or may not have been saved. Who knows, right? But just like, yeah, yeah, because they definitely impeded the search. In the water with life jackets, orange bright life jackets, just waiting. Mm. And after so many days, you know, getting tired and can't like do mm. much, especially all these balloons start coming down. And then, you know, mm. you you can't do anything. So yeah. I mean, it really is an awful situation that could have been avoided. I mean, it's not like the United Way yeah. knew exactly what was gonna happen and knew that there was gonna be missing missing fishermen. But mm-hmm. still, like you know, don't try to do outrageous things sometimes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so obviously they actually lost a ton of money on this event. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, clearly. Uh, the event actually is not recognized by Guinness. So nope. the whole thing going into this was we're going to break a record. Um, and they it's not really recognized by Guinness. And actually Guinness, uh, because of the damage, they don't actually measure environmentally unsound events like balloon releases. And technically... Disney actually broke the event's record eight years later in 1994 by inflating almost 1.6 million balloons and releasing them simultaneously. So the whole thing's kind of a wash. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, I think the biggest thing here, it comes down to like the actual lives of people. Yeah. You know, in, in the, you know, you're trying to find them in Lake Erie, but one of those car accidents could have been fatal. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, we're, I don't think we think about it, but like the, we're driving these machines going 60, 70 miles per hour, 
you know, a distracted driver or if a balloon gets in the way of the windshield or under a tire wheel or something like yeah. that, that could have been terrible too. So, um, moral I... of the story, don't do balloon releases. I'm sorry. It's just, it's not healthy for the planet. Even if it's biodegradable, I mean, I don't know. You don't want to be responsible if that balloon gets caught somewhere. Yeah. I'm also wondering, did the people who donated get their money back? No, of course not. <laughs> That sucks. Could you imagine having like your name tied to that? Like, oh yeah, I'm signing up to be a Guinness World Record breaker, and then all of a sudden, you helped <laughs> this disaster happen. Mm-hmm. That would suck. Yeah, but you you have to check out the pictures. I think the pictures. I mean, it does look really cool. I have to admit, you know, as much as I now know about the event yes. and know about the chaos and and and. And to me, the you know the criminal elements. I mean, like I said, it's not it's not intentional. Obviously, the United Way wasn't like, <laughs> let's impede a search and rescue, and you know, yeah. and hurt some people in cars, and you know, cause some horses to have damage. Arabian right? horses. But, yeah, Arabia. <laughs> Thank you. Apologies. <laughs> but you know, these are consequences of the mm-hmm. event. So uh, I, to me, that's why I think of it as true crime a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe just not the crime that people like to you know. Yeah, it's not like the nitty gritty, but like it is interesting because, yeah, you got to deal with your consequences when you don't think about, you know, when something is of that scope, it's so huge. Like Mm -hmm. it's it could it has multiple consequences, you know. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, United Way, shape up. Mm -hmm. And I've never forgiven them. Hey, well, that's the story. So uh, I hope you liked it. I hope it was a good story. It was a fun one. I liked it a lot. It was interesting. Yeah. It's just it's nice to hear like stories sometimes. You know, it feels yeah. it feels very like kindergarten when you just kind of like sit and listen. It feels yeah. nice. Well, I want to do something local. I want to do something that I thought was a little bit more tasteful. And yeah, when this idea came to my head, I thought I was like, oh my god, this is gonna be so fun. It was fun, so. and I hope you all enjoyed it. Yeah. And if you didn't, sorry. <laughs> We're still going to do a third one eventually. I will yeah. we'll do another one soon. <laughs> maybe on, around Halloween. I mean, this is awful, oh, but maybe around yes. Halloween we could do another true crime one. There we go. Ghost Stories 2 yes. slash true crime episode 3. There we go. Love That's it. That's our October. We already have October book. Got it. it. Boom. Well, thank you so much for listening, everybody. We appreciate you listening every single week. Hopefully. Remember, you can listen to us on... Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts, or on mm-hmm. YouTube, you can watch our beautiful faces on the Starbolt Studio page, including everything else that Matt does. He does a ton. Um, <laughs> and thanks so much for listening. Talk to you next Peace week. Peace out. Bye.